Hey, what up, Dodgers Nation? Doug McCain here. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. Talking more prospects today, and today we're talking pitchers. When will Bobby Miller get called up? How big of an impact could he have on this year's team? We're talking some Pepio, some Michael Grove, and a couple pitchers that you might not know that could help the Dodgers this year. But first, for all latest Dodgers news, rumors, breakdowns, interviews, and more, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and if you really want to support the channel, smash that like button. And as always, I want your takes down below in the comment section. Today's Dodgers Nation question of the day. Do you think that Bobby Miller this season will have none, some, or a big impact on the Dodgers? And also, what are your takeaways so far from Ryan Pepio? Do you think that Ryan Pepio can be a future frontline starter for the Dodgers? How do you think his career will pan out? What are your initial takeaways after Ryan Pepio's first two big league starts? Let me know down below. And for all the latest Dodgers news, head over to Dodgers Nation dot com so we're going to dive into some more prospects, and today we're going to focus on pitchers. And in just a few minutes, I'll be joined once again by my man, the Dodgers Nation prospect guru, Mr. Tim Rogers. And we're going to break down how Ryan Pepio's looked so far. How much can he help the Dodgers this season? What will his role be? How big of an impact can he have? And then the name that everyone wants to talk about, Bobby Miller. Is Bobby Miller ready this season to come up and help the Dodgers? Can he have an impact? And then also, he's going to drop some names of some pitchers that you might not know that the Dodgers could call up this season and they could have an impact. So you won't want to miss that. But we're going to start with Ryan Pepio, the Dodgers' number six prospect, the six foot three, 215 pound right handed pitcher. He made his big league debut last week in his start on the road against the Pittsburgh Pirates. He ends up giving up no runs on one hit and three innings of work. Did have five walks and he did hit a batter, did have three punch outs, and that pitch count was was high 77 pitches and of those 77 pitches 40 for strikes he was 11 for 16 on first pitch strikes and I think that was one of the big takeaways early on was his difficulty to find the strike zone especially against left-handed hitters and his stuff is so filthy with that changeup that falls out of the zone it breaks away from left-handed hitters down and to the right you also saw the life on that fastball that sometimes he misses the plate with it but I did think the fact that he did survive. He gave up no runs. You saw him out there battling, and he was grinding. And then in his next start against the Arizona Diamondbacks, On Tuesday, he ends up giving up three runs on two hits, had three walks and five punch outs in four innings of work. So early on in that outing, he struggled with the command and then he started to dial it in. He started to reel in a little bit and you saw the electricity on that fastball. You saw him challenge hitters up in the zone. You saw him go to that slider against lefties, which I think was really big as well. So it's not like he's just going to be this two trick pony with this amazing change up in this fastball. No, he is committed to using using that slider. I do think it's a work in progress with Ryan Pepio. The talent is there. The potential is there. I think he definitely has a future as a frontline starter potentially for this team if everything goes out right. And I give him tons of credit. Yes, the control issues, they're apparent, but he's out there battling. He's out there grinding and he's learning and he was thrown into the fire, thrown into the wolves after all these injuries started to pile up for the Dodgers pitchers. But he's out there and he's also admitting that nerves are a factor. He's acknowledging that that adrenaline level is a little high. So he'll settle down. He'll get more comfortable. And I definitely think he can help this team this season. But Tim, I want to bring you in and get your thoughts on how Pepio's looked so far in his first two big league starts. Yeah, the pitch count was was really high. So he he ended up walking five batters. That's uncharacteristic. And that's that's not the way he usually is. Um, but they, you know, they did struggle to to get the bat on the ball against him. I mean, there was a couple, you know, a couple good contacts, but they're still at the end of the day, only one hit. He got uh, three strikeouts, and you know, his misses were, I'd say, eighty percent of them were were on the inner half, you know, in the right-handed batter's box, and so the ball on the changeup and on the fastball was just kind of running on him. And that, might have been a little extra adrenaline. Absolutely, Tim. I agree with you 100%. And look, it's not like it's any big league team. It's the Los Angeles Dodgers. But hey, you're never ready to make your debut. So it's great to get them under the belt as soon as you can so you can learn what you need to work on. You can grow from it. But let's talk about that changeup. You've been telling me about his changeup for 
years. Your website, of course, Dodgers 2080. An 80 grade changeup is what Ryan Pepio has, and that's of the highest quality. Talk to me about that special pitch. I think one of the real special things is, I mean, he basically invented that pitch for himself. I mean, I, I asked him about that a couple of years ago, and he said, you know, he. He didn't learn it from anyone else. He just started figuring it out on his own, refined it in college. And, you know, it's the best change up, uh, you know, of any prospect out there right now. And, you know, at the end of the day, by the end or by the end of the season, it might be the best change up in Major League Baseball or pretty close to it. Yeah, Tim, that pitch can make him a very wealthy man one day. A filthy change up, a special pitch. Look, it practically should have its own agent at this point. But hey, as long as he shores up that fastball command and continues to work on that slide. I think that he's going to be just fine. But we have to, of course, talk about Bobby Miller, one of the most discussed Dodgers prospects. Of course, Bobby Miller, he's the Dodgers' number two prospect right now. Six foot five, 220 pound, the right hander. You've continued to see him develop at the minor league level. They smoothed out that delivery. They've continued to refine those mechanics. And if you look at his numbers so far this season with Double A Tulsa, he owns a 422 ERA with a 1.078 whip. 25 punch outs in six walks and 21 and a third innings pitch. So Tim, talk to me about Bobby Miller, where he's right now. Talk about his growth, his development, how he's looked so far this season. Give me the scoop on Bobby Miller. Well, when we talked Thursday night, you know, I kind of poo pooed, you know, him coming because he hadn't pitched so much. But uh, the other day he had a, you know, a five inning, uh, you know, 70 plus uh, pitch outing and was, just totally dominant. I mean, geez. And it was against um, Texas. Uh, what's their their guy? Um, their main prospect. Oh, he was just drafted recently. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Jack, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, the prospect guy. <laughs> the, the top, one of the, the top prospect. And Bobby, Bobby Miller, you know, out, out dueled him quite, yeah. quite well. And so. Jack Leiter, know, right? Jack Leiter. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> And, and Miller dominated. And, and so it's good to see the Dodgers are being very careful with building guys up. You know, I was talking with different pitchers um, as I was doing an article for Dodgers Nation a few days ago. And, you know, some guys have, you know, 24, 25 innings. Some guys have 15 to 16. They're just taking them all at different levels. Um, and they're just, you know, and so they don't just go, hey, everyone is going to throw, you know, 50 pitches. Everyone's going to go throw. So now they go, uh, you know, Gavin Stone, you're stretched out a little bit more than, you know, the Nick Nestrini. So you're going to, you know, you're going to get a little more leeway. And Nestrini, you know, will come along. And, you know, John Rooney has thrown, you know, almost 25 innings. And, you know, um, Grove was only, what, 15 or 16. But Pepio was, you know, in the in the 20s. So they just had different levels for different guys for where they were at. So, yeah, it'll be very interesting to see with the health of this Dodgers rotation and this bullpen, will they have to call? All upon a guy like Bobby Miller, bring him up and start that clock already, probably sooner than they would like to. But do you think there's a chance that we could have Miller time this year with the show Dodgers? I, I I think the way they're going and moving guys up, I think he's going to. I mean, I just the the, the pace that we're seeing player, you know, pitchers go down and knowing this, I mean, knowing what was going to happen with 2022 with the short spring training and everything like that. I think the Dodgers knew that some of this stuff might happen. Happen. I think that's why they they made sure Pepio was was ready. I think they you know Grove was you know he was on fortunately for him he was on the forty man roster and and it start really having some success. Um, but Miller's not on the forty man roster, so I think they'll be a little more careful with that, and they'll they'll wait probably a little bit longer. But um, don't be surprised, you know. And and I still think that. Uh, Man, I can't, I, I can just imagine him coming in, you know, here's a game that's real tight and, you know, the bullpen spent and the last guy we have is Bobby Miller to come get the last three outs of a big game. And I can see him doing it. So, hey, I like it. Hey, man, they're taking the kid gloves off some of these young prospects. You saw him bring up Ryan Pepio, bring up Michael Grove from Double A. So this is an all-hands-on-deck team this year. If they think that he can come up and help this year's squad, then you got to do it. But a couple names I want to talk about, too, are some names we talked about a couple days ago. Some guys that are down in the minors that some Dodger fans might not know that could help this year's team. Talk to me about those guys. Yeah, I'm... Um... 
you know, there's a guy at, at Tulsa, and, and really he should, if they, if they would have had the uh, the uh, Rule 5 draft, I think he would have been picked, and that's Mark Washington. He's about he's about six foot seven, and uh, he just get he he's a multiple inning guy. Uh, most of his, it seems like at least more than half of his outings is a reliever or two inning types. So like we saw that with Almonte, um, and so with Washington, they do that, and he just gets a ton of guys out, keeps the ball down, gets a lot of grounders. You know, for you think, oh, six seven, he's coming in throwing a hundred. Well, he's not throwing a hundred, but he's coming in there and keeping the ball low and getting a lot of outs. Uh, you know, the soft contact and things. So he's a guy, and he's not on the forty man. He's not on any of these big prospect lists. But he's a guy, you know, just reminds me of, uh, you know, someone like a Justin Brule last year who kind of, you know, for most of us, not all of us, came out of nowhere. And I think Mark's one of those guys that, that might be able to pull that off too. Um, there's a double A, and now some of those guys have been moved up to triple A. I wrote an article a few weeks ago for Dodgers Nation. About, there's like seven or eight guys down there in their bullpen that are just nasty. Um, I'm going to bring up another one. His name is Guillermo, Guillermo Zuniga. He's just another guy that's coming. He's touching 100 now. Um, he's he's getting close too. So don't be surprised if some of those guys from Double A come up and you know, from that bullpen and help out eventually this year. Especially the way guys are dropping. I mean, geez, losing Trinan just I still eh, that's the worst one. <laughs> yeah, I mean the Dodgers bullpen losing Blake Trinan is absolutely massive because he was their best reliever last year. Their high leverage guy that they threw out there to put out all the fires. You saw him in the sixth inning, the seventh inning, the eighth inning. He even recorded seven saves last year in the ninth inning and Doc trusted him against any part of the order and he would really fix a lot of problems right now that this Dodgers bullpen might have because he's their guy and I I think that when you look at some of these names you mentioned, those are names we have to remember. So guys out there, these are some of those hidden gems, the Mark Washingtons, the Guillermo Zunigas, guys that could come up and, like you said, be a Justin Brule type, a name that wasn't on anyone's radar but came up and definitely had some form of impact. But thanks again, as always, Tim. But if you haven't yet, be sure to follow Tim at SD Dodger on Twitter and Instagram. Go check out his website, Dodgers2080. He's the prospect guru, and we're going to be checking in with him every couple of weeks getting the scoop on what's going down with the Dodgers top prospects who are some names that can come up and help this year's team so definitely be looking forward to some videos with Tim all throughout the season but I want to know from you guys do you think that the Dodgers should call up Bobby Miller this year do you think he can have an impact on this year's show Dodgers let me know down below and also what are your takeaways what are your thoughts on Ryan Pepio's first two big league starts let me know down below my name is DMAC. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. For all latest Dodgers news, rumors, high videos, breakdowns, interviews, and more, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and if you really want to support the channel, smash that like button. And as always, think blue, bleed blue, and I'm out.